This is a continuation of my last video where I talked about navigations. The tabs component allows you to create multiple related navigations, but hey, those look just like button components, and you're correct. Those are just button components mushed together in a diff. We'll make it beautiful soon. It mainly uses two components, tabs and tab, which goes inside. To select the current active tab, you can provide a value, and by default, it has an index value, meaning this tab will have a value of 0, this of 1, and this of 2. You can change this by providing the value prop. To make it interactive, you have to provide the unchanged prop to listen the value that is clicked. Luckily, you only need to provide it to the tabs component and it will manage everything. Then, you can show the content inside each tab by handling the tabs value. You can see that the tabs have different widths. You can set the variant to full width if you wish to distribute the width into equal parts. It is mostly used on mobile. There's also the scrollable variant, useful when you have a lot of tabs. Makes it possible to scroll through the tabs if the max width is reached, and not all tabs fit into that container. The arrows will disappear if you enter into a mobile breakpoint. That's because it becomes swipeable on mobile. If you wish to show the scroll arrows even on mobile, then you can provide the allow scroll buttons mobile property. Provide the center prop and it will add the justify content style to center. This avoids wrapping your tabs with another component. You can change the text and indicator color as well. But for some reason, it only accepts primary, secondary, and inherit. So be sure to add your custom ones on the theme. You can also disable your tabs with a disabled prop, which will make it unclickable. For vertical tabs, you can change its orientation to vertical, and all scrolling behaviors will also change to vertical. Icons are also possible with the icon prop. If you care for accessibility, you can use these Mui Lab components of the tabs. It just provides a different approach on structuring your tabs. I find it quite useful since it has a component called Tab Panel, so you wouldn't need to provide your own logic since it maps the values selected to the Tab Panel. A lot of times, websites don't put all the information into one single form because they just have a lot of questions to ask you and it will look overwhelming if they blast you with a hundred questions. So, it is better to spread it out evenly so the user does not feel like they're spending much time on it. This component is called Stepper. First, you will need a wrapper around the stepper, or you can just use the SX props to set your desired width, and then provide each step with its step label, and you'll have something like this. Now, you just need to provide the active step depending on the step of the user, starting from step 0, because we are programmers, and then you are done. You can use the prop alternative label to position your labels at the bottom. There is also an error prop, in which automatically displays an error icon and uses MUI error colors for visual feedback. Additionally, there's an optional prop which adds another label alongside the step label. Now, let's talk about the icons. You can technically change the default icon using the icon property and it will work fine. However, it overrides every status, so if you set it to error or if the step is completed, the icon would not change. To solve this issue, you can provide your own step icon component, receiving all status props and you can show the icons on each situation. By default, it uses the step icon component, but you can return any React node. You can also customize this in the theme to make it cleaner. This also applies to the line that connects the step. It uses the step connector component. There's also the step button component which makes the step clickable. However, it will only work properly when the non-linear property is provided. You can also change its orientation to vertical that opens up the step content component that shows up when the current step is active. If you set it to horizontal, it will just break. So try to use it only on vertical. There is also a component called Mobile Stepper. It is more simplified and suitable for smaller screens. These are the basic props for it to work properly. It needs a next and a back button, which accepts a React node, as well as steps and active steps, similar to the Stepper component. By default, it has a variant of dots, but it also has text and progress. Furthermore, it is placed at the bottom of the page. However, you can use the position prop to change it to the top. Both of these take advantage of CSS properties, or you can just set it to static which follows the document's flow. Another similar component is the pagination. 
You might have seen this on my table video where I introduced the table pagination component. Nonetheless, it can also be used as a single component. You can control the pages with the page and unchanged prop using counts for the total amount of pages. It has two variants, text and outline, as well as two shapes circular and rounded. Additionally, you can change its colors, although it only accepts three. You can add more on the theme though. The disable prop is also available if you need it as well. If you need a button to go to the last and first page, you can use the show first button and show last button. This will display additional buttons on the pagination. It is possible to use your own icons as well. Simply pass in the render item property and the pagination item component, which is the default render and use the slots component to customize those icons. The amount of pages shown is also customizable. The sibling count is the amount of pages around the current page. So for instance, if I set it to zero, there will not be any page around it. If I set it to one, then it will be one on each side and so on. The boundary count is the amount of pages shown at the start and at the end. So for instance, if I set it to two, then it will always appear two at the start and at the end. If you want to create your own pagination, Material UI exposes a use pagination hook that the pagination component uses internally, but I wouldn't put that much effort on it. Remember the floating action button I talked about on one of my previous videos? Well, there is also a component called Speed Dial, which displays a series of other actions. It needs the area label property that serves kind of like an ID and an icon which you can just use the Speed Dial icon, but it is not limited. The Speed Dial actions are just the items that pops out when you hover over the speed dial. It also accepts an icon and additionally a tooltip title that appears when you hover it as well. Additionally, you can provide any of these four directions to indicate where the item pops out. Similarly for the placement property in the speed dial actions, where it manages the placement of the tooltip. If you want this tooltip to always show, then you can provide the tooltip open property. However, this will ignore the placement. Besides that, you can also manage the states of the speed dial with these properties. Now, there's another component that is very common on mobile apps, which is the bottom navigation. It is similarly structured like the speed dial. It uses the bottom navigation as the wrapper for the bottom navigation action component. You can provide values for each item or just use numbers starting from zero to select each item. Pass in the show labels property if you want all items to display their labels. It is recommended to show labels for 3 items and no labels for 4 or 5. I have covered most of the components of Material UI 5. If I've missed any components or have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about it. For future content, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you on the next video. Have an extraordinary day and thank you for watching. Bye!